So, you're making a 3D model in Blender. You might be doing an animation, or perhaps an object in your new video game. This is great, as Blender is the best tool for doing this. Unfortunately, you're having trouble managing a smooth surface at an acceptable high polygon count. There are lots of weird creases everywhere, and you need to get rid of them. You need a way to model using low poly counts at first, and then upon rendering, apply a filter of sorts to increase it back. Or perhaps you need to model a doorway in a wall. The answer, of course, is modifiers. Let's see how these situations can be solved by them. So, let's begin by tackling the first situation. Here is a model of a sarcophagus, made for a previous class I've had in social studies. Currently, this model looks a bit low poly. It's similar to a model from a GameCube or PS2 era game. There are also no materials to speak of, instead having a specular texture, which tends to highlight how low poly an object is. We want it to look as high poly as possible, as it should be presentable in a final product, like a video game. Well, this might seem like a daunting task, but in fact, it can be done in only a few clicks. This is, of course, using modifiers. First, we should define edge creases. These are used by the modifier. With them, the modifier knows which edges should stay as angles, and which edges should be divided. Here, the edge creases I've used are pictured. In order to add them, select the edges to be creased and press Shift-E. Then, enter in how much effect this crease should have as a decimal from 0, no effect, to 1, which means that the edge should be left completely intact. Next, from the default modeling view, go on over to the Modifiers tab. This model already has a modifier, a mirror one, which helps modelers create symmetrical models more quickly by copying one or more of the sides of the model and rotating them, like that of a mirror. This is another type of useful modifier, but we'll be adding another one. Click on the Add Modifier drop-down menu. The modifier that we need is called Subdivision Surface and is under the Generate category. Make sure that the visibility settings along the top match mine on screen. Finally, we set the Levels viewport and Render Fields to 2. This makes the subdivision more detailed. This... as opposed to this. The next situation I mentioned is making a doorway in a wall, for example. This would be incredibly annoying to do by plain modeling. Perhaps you would make an inset into the face, and scale, position, and extrude the inset. Fortunately, the presence of the Boolean modifier makes this problem trivial. Once again, from the default modeling view, add a cube. Scale it to match the size of the doorway you desire on the left to right and vertical dimensions while the cube should be at least deep enough to completely cover the area of the wall that the doorway should cover. Next, select the wall itself, and go to the same modifier tab that we were in before. Select the Add Modifier option again, and select the Boolean modifier under the Generate category. Make sure that the mode is set to Difference rather than Intersect or Union, and make sure that the visibility settings along the top match mine on screen. The operand type should be set to Object. Once these settings are verified, set the Object field to the cube that you've added. You can then go up to the Outliner section of the Blender modeling interface where you can easily hide said cube in both the viewport and rendered view. You should now see that the wall has a doorway hole in it. Be aware though that if your models such as these bricks have holes in them, you may see that the interfaces of your model will not be filled either. Even though the mortar here technically means that none of the inside faces are exposed, it's technically not joined with bricks by any vertices, so the result still has these holes. Blender does not do any of this really for you. So with that all being said, why should you care? Well, these types of situations are quite common. In fact, modeling most objects can be accelerated by using modifiers. For example, I've already briefly mentioned the mirror modifier. 
which can help with modeling symmetrical objects. You may initially underestimate how common symmetrical objects are. Of course, objects found in nature are not likely to be symmetrical, but things like human faces, bodies of animals, and most human-made objects have some level of symmetry. There is another modifier that is similar to the mirror modifier called the array modifier. Here I've used this modifier with an object offset to duplicate, rotate, and position one segment of a trash can to make an entire trash can. The boolean modifier can be used to make a doorway in a wall, as I previously mentioned. It can also be used to carve a cave into a mountain, or to simulate an explosion in terrain. There are plenty of other deforming and generation modifiers, but some of the most exciting modifiers are the physics ones. These modifiers are so different from the rest that I'll be doing an entire episode on physics alone. Of course, there are a few limitations of modifiers. The main one, which is similar to the one that I went over in the compositing episode, is that not all modifiers that you could possibly need are represented. As Blender is always in development in open source though, you can always suggest one, or even code it yourself. The next limitation is that they can get incredibly slow. I'm not sure exactly why this is, perhaps it's due to a lack of threading, as they are written in C. Contrary to popular belief though, it's certainly not because they're written in Python, because they're not. Most parts of Blender are written in C or C++. Likely, it's simply the sheer volume of polygons that Blender needs to account for on only a single thread. If you notice that one modifier has a particularly large effect on the amount of polygons, or if it simply makes your session slow to a crawl, you can always hide it from the viewport, which also stops Blender from accounting for it in the first place. In conclusion, modifiers are some of the most useful features in Blender. They can assist in modeling, physics, and presentation. I hope you can adapt this newfound knowledge to give your projects in Blender that special flair that you've always wanted. With that being said, I'll talk to you all next time.